Welcome to the season six premiere of the Balanced Voice podcast. In today's episode, our hosts, Renya Mancarios and Jennifer Homan, discuss a topic that is near and dear to our hearts, community responsibility to protect children and vulnerable populations of people. Joining us today is a very special guest, Stephen Ives. Stephen is the CEO of the YMCA of Greater Houston. The core of all this is a stronger, more tightly knit community. Mm -hmm that when we know our neighbors, we believe that we're neighbors and we're all in this together, we're less likely to do harm and more likely to step in and help. And uh, that's been, we've, we've really committed to that actually over the next 10 years to transform, to have a transformational impact on how people experience community. Over the past 30 plus years, Stephen's passion has been to help communities grow and thrive through programs and services at the YMCA. In our conversation, we'll be exploring the ways in which the YMCA is leading the way by modeling how to protect those who are most vulnerable amongst us through community-based programs. The Balanced Voice podcast is powered by Crime Stoppers of Houston. We are a podcast by the community and for the community. And we have a mission to facilitate balanced conversations that offer real solutions about today's most pressing issues with guests from across the nation. This is the Balanced Voice podcast, and we're thrilled to have you with us for our season six premiere. We're so happy to have you today. Steve Ives, president and CEO of YMCA. How are you? I'm fantastic. Thanks so much for doing this and for inviting me and letting me be part of this important conversation. Oh, we're so, Jen, in the studio, yeah. like, I know, I'm so excited. Yeah. I've seen him speak several times, so I'm glad we're having him here. It's nice because we do a lot virtual and it's always the best to have people with us. And so I know Jen has like a million things to ask you, I have a million things to ask you, but we'll we won't ask you a million things. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so uh, we're both from the New England areas. Tell us, tell us a little bit, sort of your path to becoming CEO of the YMCA. I mean, that's a big, big position and a big deal. Thirty-seven years ago, I found myself needing something to do on my days off and started lifeguarding at a YMCA in Portland, Maine. And I was part time for about six months before it became a full time opportunity for me. Seven years into that, I became a CEO of a small Y in Southern Maine and. 11 years in that small town in Biddeford, Maine. And then I was in Lawrence, Massachusetts for 10 mm -hmm. years, Columbus, Ohio for three years, and now Houston, Texas. So I've been a CEO now for the last, this is my 30th year, and I've been a CEO in four different cities. That's unbelievable. <clears throat> I love the stories of volunteer to working mm -hmm. to you run, mm -hmm. you run it. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Mm. And so you oversee Houston. Yes. Which is obviously the largest footprint, I would imagine, of it's all the- probably the largest footprint, you know, budget wise and um, total members and facilities. There's New York City and a couple of others that might be a little larger, but 10,000 square miles is our service area. And it's, yeah, it's amazing. And, and how many people do you serve in the greater Houston area? <clears throat> So it's uh, it's three hundred fifty thousand people, or in the course of a year or more. You know, it's hard to it's hard to get all the counts with our refugees, etc. Right. But um, yeah, it's one hundred and sixty thousand members at the moment. That's, in wow. that number. So you have you truly represent the population. Mm -hmm. You have every religion, mm -hmm. every culture, every socioeconomic background. You also have people coming in um, with all various levels of distress, stress, right. trauma, kids that are in, you know, sort of the perfect idyllic home to kids that have been abused and, you know. Same for the adults, right? Traffic. People that are coming in to do physical health, but then you have some that you guys serve that are sure. that are mentally struggling and emotionally, right? Because right. they're coming from situations that are, I think that's the most unknown part of, of your work. Right. Is the, is the international perspective. Right. What y'all do in human trafficking and and with refugees. Yeah, that explain traffic, that a little bit? Yeah, the Traffic Persons Program is yeah. a group of social workers who work with police and law enforcement. And once people escape, then our folks swoop, swoop in and help provide housing and counseling and support mm -hmm. and help them really get their feet back on the ground and become contributory citizens mm -hmm. in their own right, just as we do with our refugees who are new to the country. It's learning the language, it's learning the culture, learning the norms, learning the laws. Our, our team is very active in that whole, I'll call it welcoming. Mm -hmm. And that translates to the human trafficking work uh, also because people who have experienced that kind of a trauma, suddenly now they're, not, they're out. <clears throat> they've actually had a support system. You know, it's been an unhealthy one, yes. but they've had a support system. And um, yeah. we provide that support, uh, healthy support system uh, post-trauma. Right. So it's so much more than just, I mean, 
You and I were talking about we have YMCA Why stories. stories. Absolutely. Right. I was getting my hair done this morning and somebody was like, oh, I, I used to work at the Y. I used to be a counselor or, you know, work in the youth program. So we think of it as going there to work out. It was like where I learned to swim, where you learned to Framingham, swim, Framingham, the Framingham where we play Y, soccer yep. or sports. Yep. But it's so much more than that. Yeah. What Our, other services are there besides the well, we health facilities? We, we, we've been saying a lot lately. We have billboards, not a place of purpose. Yeah, I love not that. Not a gym, a community. Yeah. So that's actually those a are great tools. Campaign. Those are tools through which we connect with people and help them connect with each other. At the end of the day. What's most important to us is strengthening those bonds that tie us together in community because that's where people are more are more likely to step up and help another person and right. less likely to do harm to each other when they see and believe and experience others as part of a group that they belong to and that are their mm -hmm. neighbors. So you look at the menu of programs, as you asked, there's the social services that happen through our International Services Division, refugee resettlement. We also have a whole legal assistance program. We have 14 attorneys on staff who are helping unaccompanied minors when they come uh, in, th in through the refugee resettlement system or mm -hmm. asylum system. And that's a whole division. Uh, it's about a third of our whole operation. But we have 22 centers that you would recognize as traditional YMCA centers. And we have 200 school age child care sites and child care sites. We're partnering with KIPP and some other uh, community colleges to have child care, uh, full day child care on site. And then we have the school age programs in the after school sites and a camp up in Trinity. Wow. So it's a pretty full you menu. A of, so a summer, like a mm, summer camp? Yeah. Camp Cullen. It's oh, really? beautiful. I, know, I didn't oh, know our, that. Oh, Camp that's Cullen us. is y'all? That's us. Yes. Camp oh, I didn't Cullen know that. is uh, run by the YMCA of Greater Houston. Well, mm -hmm. I remember like why, I remember being a kid and having why like summer camps, like mm -hmm. day camps. Yeah, yeah, day camps, but, but not I didn't know Camp Cullen camps. was y'all's. Yeah. That's yeah. right. Yeah, it's beautiful resident camp and we're starting to do a whole lot more in the off season, which relates to this conversation because mm. we're working with school groups, but we're also uh, being a support for some of our refugees. There's a whole group of Afghans that have gone up there and are gonna do a couple of three day retreats there for them to experience the wilderness, experience the beauty of outdoors and uh, have that time together as a group. That's amazing. Well, I have an idea for a retreat. So. There we go. Oh, okay. <laughs> so my idea for retreat is, oh, gosh. I know, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> um, so is, do you know, like we have so many kids that are being groomed and recruited online and, yeah. and, and they're just digitally addicted. Right. I think there's a space detox? for this, having a, like a, a digital Just detox retreat it. with the family where you, where it's not a child that's been either abducted or, you know, groomed and left the home and been trafficked, but someone that just needs digital detox because they've seen so much online right. and been just a great digitally idea. sexually exploited. I think that should be your next retreat. We're on it. We're, <laughs> we will help plan yes. this. We'll help plan it. Can I say something very weird about this? And, and so... If you watch the podcast, Jen and I kind of go off a little, and that's, that's good. That's yeah. fine. But I, for Lent, everybody sort of gives up different things for Lent. I told my family, I'm going to put down my phone. So if you've had like a hard time reaching me lately, it's because I am putting down my phone. And specifically in the evening, it is not near me for Lent. Mm. Nice. But my girls have said, we feel less connected to you because mm. we can't reach you through your phone. And right. I thought, that is so strange. But I, it's like such a part of how we connect even with our family members mm. and our children that... It, it's like having the opposite effects. I was seeing it as a detox right. in a way. Like I just need to cleanse my mind from the addictions, what you see, just even partaking in all this stuff. And my kids saw it as like, we can't, Separate, like, we can't connect away. with you. And anyway, I was, I was recently having a really profound and deep conversation with my father. I was in Portland, Maine, visiting with him. And after about two hours, I showed him my phone. I said, my phone rang four times. While we we're having this conversation, it stayed in my pocket. That's amazing. Because we were, I was pre yeah. that presence, right? Yeah. But yeah. the acknowledgement that it's there, I think we can't, we can't make it go away. You can't make it. But go I think away. that's what kids need most. They need their parents to be present with them. They need their parents and to be present. And it's not necessarily getting rid of the phone. It's actually being present. And if we're talking about giving kids the skills they need in order to protect themselves from abuse or harm or disruption that's unnecessary, our presence with them is incredibly powerful. So you guys have like a direct. You know, you're directly serving youth, you're mm -hmm. working with youth, you're spending time with youth, and right. you have teams that do this. But as the information sort of trickles up to you, what are you walking away mm -hmm. as thinking like the greatest needs are right now for well, mental health? Everybody's mm -hmm. talking about it. It's real. Um, the, the trauma that young people were experiencing, you've ju we just described it, the addiction to mm -hmm. digital, digital platforms or even being harmed online as well as what bullying, typical bullying, we all experienced it. Mm -hmm. We saw it. We maybe participated in yeah. it in ways we, that we regret, but 
um, that kind of experience for kids um, is incredibly traumatic. And then you throw on a school getting disrupted and in an environment where there's so much hate, there's so much, yeah. you know, other othering that's going mm -hmm. on by us adults. Oh, uh, it's and I'm going Twitter. Yeah, right. I think that that's left our kids really confused, I think, and unsure of themselves. So this love and compassion that they get from caring adults through the YMCA and other volunteers that play in is incredibly powerful in and of itself. But that ability to be OK, know that I'm loved and I loved unconditionally. Everybody needs to have that in order to be successful in life. Um, that shows up in the way we show up for people and for kids. You know, it's interesting. I remember being as a kid, I think I went to your after school after school programs. Remember, remember when you were called a latchkey kid? Oh, yeah. I had both Why parents. We, all worked. we yeah. were all latchkey My dad kids. was in medical school. My mom <laughs> yeah. worked, was a, you know, a, a working mom. And and so we were all latchkey. That's where the why parented yeah. some of us. Yes. That's interesting that you say that. And so so what, what are y'all looking at besides, so y'all have social services to provide these type of programs, mm -hmm. mental health programs to all ages or? Well, we, we call it our social emotional learning component of our child care programs. Mm -hmm. And so we're teaching kids the skill set breathing techniques. We're That's teaching true. them uh, self-awareness around their okay space and their not okay space. So when yeah. a kid is having an emotional you teach karate upheaval. too, so I can breathe and kick somebody's ass. Let's do that. I like both. I like both. Is there to, an age minimum We try to have them breathe before they kick maximum. someone's ass, right? <laughs> and avoid the kicking ass. So, <laughs> so the idea is if, if kids are more aware of, oh, what's going on for I'm being emotionally triggered. Yeah, I believe And then have huge. the skill sets to be able to separate from that circumstance. A huge, um, yeah, right. Focus on their breath, use some of the mindfulness techniques that we're teaching them, uh, just as well as some curriculum around. That's uh, your no see respond. It's right. that's um, so it's a little different, it different though, different, right? Though? That seems yeah, it's like a, little a little different. different. So those are components. What I'm talking about is components of how we work with kids on yeah. a day to day basis. The no see respond is what's what's called a nudge, and so there's a there's a whole we identify with us. this very much do in you? terms of the work we do. But yeah. tell us, yeah. So it, the there, idea there's a lot is of alignment. it's a reminder that oh, I'm supposed to know what's going. And when I see that, when our staff see that that symbol, it's a reminder of oh, we're here. We're supposed to know the know what happens, how sexual abuse occurs, mm -hmm. what grooming looks like what behavior you see in young people. So if I have that knowledge and be awake, see it, see it when it's there, don't ignore it and respond in some way when you see signs by asking some good questions or getting help. So it's that whole no see respond is is the classic nudge. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. it's a reminder out there. You use it for the general public oh, also. Yeah, so we've done it first with our staff. We put on their shirts. It was a reminder of the, our responsibility and accountability for protecting children and for being aware okay. and for doing our work to make sure we know the signs of Because the perpetrators are everywhere, right? Yes. And so I think it's, a, it's good that it's a visual in a place where you, you wouldn't expect to, to have, well, you don't expect to see perpetrators or people that are predators inside mm -hmm. safe spaces like church or schools or the what. But there are. And so I think that's really good accountability that says, okay, hey, we're watching here too. Well, we're that's, on point. that's the conundrum, right? Because yeah. you would expect that it wouldn't happen. Right. But where's the best place for them to gain access to children and build yes. trust with parents? I love it. But in those kind of circumstances, that's why we have the practices and we have the protocols around how we interact with kids and how we allow others to interact with kids. I mean, we, we don't allow, if you have your child in our program mm -hmm. and you're just falling in love with their instructor and you want them to babysit, that instructor would tell you, I can't. Yeah. I can't come babysit Good. with you because I can't be alone in a home with a kid that I've met in this program. Not because I'm going to do anything wrong, but mm -hmm. that's how a groomer, yeah. uh, that's one of the techniques they use and we know they've used in order to gain access and build trust with parents. And then once they build that trust, then it's pretty easy to say, oh, them, I'll, yeah. care, I'll drive them home. And it becomes this, this process where over time, and I'm not saying everybody who's a kind human being, but most people who are kind human right, beings and I just know. want to help right. have no intended harm. No. But that's the problem is these people who Sometimes are inclined. Can't differentiate which ones well, are Well, yeah. we don't we don't know. And yeah. And it's a different world now. It's just uh, such it's a different too. world. I'll yeah. tell you, I love the fact that you know, we sit here with you and you run you know, one of the biggest YMCA's across the country, 160,000 members potentially mm -hmm. serving over 300,000. We just spoke with Bob, um, with Goya. And I just so thank, I mean, Crime Stoppers, we do it every day. Mm -hmm. I love the fact that these major groups are so focused on the mm -hmm. protection of children and families. I love that you guys, the work you're doing with refugees, with victims, um, because I feel like we're dealing with so many different things. There's 
sort of like the group of people that think this isn't our problem. This can never happen to us. This isn't my kids. Sure. Then there's a group of people that think, well, everybody's a criminal. Everybody's right. a predator. <laughs> everybody's trying to, you know, exploit my child or, mm-hmm. or traffic me because they looked at me at Target. You know, there's mm-hmm. that group. Um, then there are the predators that they're, it's like the greatest, and I always say the greatest gift we can give these predators is an uninformed community, mm-hmm. is a family that's completely clueless, kids that have no idea of the red flags. You know, they're just kind of walk and say, I would say this. I get what you're saying, but that's actually the gift we can give them is informed. That's exactly so that why. So that yes. they, it's less likely that they'll do this horrible thing that'll yes, harm another that's person. That's the whole point. Yeah. It's like the greatest their the greatest gift to them is the is no education. Mm-hmm. So the greatest gift to families and communities mm-hmm. is the education. Right. And I love the fact that you are doing and you're pouring so much of that in. Uh, what are hurdles? Are you facing mm-hmm. hurdles? As you expand and do the work you're doing? Well, we got a lot of staff, a lot of volunteers, just a lot of people. And you can get How varying. many do you like? So we have over 3,000 staff right now, more, okay. more, many part timers. So yeah. making sure that they all do, over 3, everybody does, and, staff? and thousands of members too, yeah. uh, and thousands of um, volunteers. Mm. And so you, you do the training, you do the orientation, and you have certain practices, but then you have to inspect what you expect in order to make sure that happens. That's a, that's a challenge. And so one of the things we've d- done is start to deploy the help of parents. So more parents are informed, they're gonna speak up when they see, and it's hap- It's beautiful. Yes. When a parent says, oh, wait a minute, this you might wanna check on this this outreach that happened or this little little breach. The, the yeah. key is to catch groomers doing grooming behavior before they actually do very harmful behavior. Because That's you right. can intervene Prevention. early on, mm-hmm. you can intervene for early on, and right. and create the conditions where the bad thing doesn't happen to that child. So, what's your collaboration look like with Goya Cares? Well, we're just getting to know. I met Bob just, just had my first one-on-one meeting with him a few weeks ago, but we, you know, I, I spoke at the Katie Christian Chamber, mm-hmm. and the head of that chamber has stayed connected with me, and she she just reached out and she said, "I was at this meeting with Goya Cares and." You came to mind. You're on my heart. You guys need to meet. So she really connected us yeah, together. Yeah. yeah, she connected us together, and we've had a couple of meetings. I, I, in the middle of the first meeting, I just like, time out. This something's happening. Yeah, here. yeah. Because I think we all feel that way with Goya and what they're doing. Yeah, and it's so aligned with the work we're doing around child sexual abuse prevention. Now, I've been deep in this work um, since you know since 2005, and that was the year I was at a Y. I was leading in Massachusetts and a horrific case came out. Um, it was a past employee mm. who had gone on to another Y and did some horrific things to some girls at that oh. other organization. But because we, he'd all worked at all of us, we all got drawn into it. Mm. And did at, that spawn some of the, some of the, the it just elevated, having... well, it elevated for me, right. my sense of accountability and responsibility and yeah. urgency around it. At the same time, I, I ended up reconnecting with a high school friend who were best friends. We spent, did overnights at each other's houses and very, very close friends all through high school. I had no idea. He shared with me much later, past college, that the whole time his father was sexually molesting him. Oh my god! So this lovely human being that I knew as his father mm-hmm. and this great person. Really... And there's, there's typically two ways that people, two past people go. And that's not exact, but you're either a high performer and, and kill it in the world or you're you're a mess you, yeah. and so his brother was the latter and he he he's been a success he's sold two or three six companies he's been a great business mm-hmm. success so he was using that as a way to tell tell the story and elevate it so all these things came together i just thought that i'm being called to service for this and a group of ceos in the y and myself with our insurance company redwoods started we had a meeting they hosted a meeting at their place it was a weekend to say we've got to be more proactive yeah Mm. we can take care of the kids in our own program but we've got a whole movement to take care of and there's some science we're learning we know how groomers groom yeah we didn't know that and i'll say 20 years ago right your experience has been steve but we i've actually been looking at sort of camp safety Mm. with a with a mom whose son was sexually assaulted yeah for almost his entire stay at a very prominent Texas oh. camp. Oh my goodness. And when she sort by of other campers, right? By it by the counselor. Oh, by the counselor. The counsel, by the counselor. And when she sort of came to me and said there's almost no oversight yeah. on the wellness 
of children. There's mm-hmm. a lot on like, you know, they want to go outside, they want to be in the in the pool, they want to be on the ropes. Of course, actually, it's not even as much as you would think. Um, she said, but if they make an outcry, there's no real path. And sort of the people who oversee the camps, there's there's no real path and i thought that can't be and as we dove in and looked at the laws i was shocked Mm -hmm. at what i saw the glaring lack of oversight the state is really looking at physical structure um health and sanitation and food Mm -hmm. um they're saying we can't sort of do background checks because a lot of the people are young you know they're they just they're not even 18 and i mean it was overwhelming to me so the fact that you know people whether the laws are in place or, or not people like you are so fixated mm. on the health and safety, all encompassing right. of every child that walks through the door is so important. Mm-hmm. And I think the more parents can be educated and trained and oriented to this as a thing, not just because they signed the form at the Y yeah. or talked with staff, but because they've taken the time to get on any number of the online educational components that just teach you, you know, what is what is child sexual abuse? Yeah. What is what is grooming? What are those behaviors? And they look an awful lot like good neighborly behavior. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the more informed parents there are. I tell you, I had a we were we were on a on a trip on a on a cruise with our family and we had this opportunity to have a conversation around this issue because all the kids were about to leave and leave me in the cabin with my young with my niece. Mm. And I said, no, you can't. And the mm-hmm. kids were like, what are you talking about? You're not going to do anything. You're absolutely correct. And she's not staying in this room. Well, I'm not staying in this room alone waiting for her to finish whatever she was yeah. doing oh, yeah. in order to go to dinner. We all go to dinner. So that sparked a really interesting conversation at dinner. Mm-hmm. Um, and then people were there. They're thinking, well, how can you ever? Well, we always do our best, right? Yeah. We're not going to stop our kids from tripping in a hole, but we're mm-hmm. going to do everything we can to make sure that they're there. But I think the awareness and knowledge and alertness to simple things like that. You don't, you don't help really a kid feel though. comfortable in that situation. You it, want them to say no. And so I've, I've only been doing this what, six or seven years now, totally focused you know, this. primarily on this? sexual exploitation yeah. and human mm-hmm. trafficking, right? Mm-hmm. And, and I will say, though, as much as awareness that we think we keep doing and talking to parents right. and, and teachers and administrators and adults, really adults, mm-hmm. about what's going on, they still don't think it can happen to them. And I think what's That's important is that issue. It, what's important is that brands like Crime Stoppers, that YMCA, mm-hmm. that brands like Goya, mm-hmm. the more of those big corporate brands that are well known by the community and are trusted by the community, yeah. y'all have to keep they have to keep coming out mm-hmm. so that parents finally be like, well, Goya, the food company, is getting involved and talking about trafficking and grooming of my children. YMCA, who mm-hmm. are a tape, is now. So I think it's it's so good to see these big brands come out right. because adults just still don't believe that it could happen to them. They believe they've created this bubble where mm-hmm. it does not exist. It does not exist. No, it does well, not it's, exist. Well, it's shining the light. Yeah. There's a great so organization good. called Darkness to Light that has mm-hmm. some wonderful training on this. And I love that concept. Just put. To keep it, take this issue out of the darkness. We don't talk about that. Right. And start talking about it and having conversations with our kids and other adults about how to create safer places, safer spaces, safer communities. So I, I love the idea. Put the, put the lights on. Um, those that operate in the dark will scurry away. Thank you to our sponsor, Fliplock, for making this episode possible. Fliplock is a door lock unlike any other lock that was created as a nationwide, straightforward solution to protect your people, whether that be in universities, dorms, daycares, hospitals, or even government buildings. It can be added to nearly any door to keep you and yours safe. We are proud to have such a strong and like-minded sponsor of the Balanced Voice podcast. Check out Fliplock at fliplock.com. That's F L I P dot com. Do you ever have people that don't want you to, t- I mean, in the community that, that say, look, you know. No, I haven't. Not in this day and age. Really? I, I think mm-hmm. 20 years ago, people would have thought, oh, don't. Pe- don't talk about yeah, that. Yeah, don't talk about that. I think we've come a long way. I, I always think about when my, my youngest was in like preschool, kindergarten, they did like an act. She was in a private school at the time. And they did, she has like big red hair. She looked like brave, Merida from Brave when she was little. Yeah. And she came home and she said, mommy, today we learned about drop down and go low. And I said, red, what are you talking about? Drop down and go low? Like if 
what, what does that mean? She goes, and so my little girl, she was four or five, with her big red hair, got on the floor and like got on her elbows and did an army crawl. And I, and I was like, well, Evelyn, is this for a fire? When do you drop down and go low? And she said, well, mommy, when if a bad man en- enters a school and the teacher flips the face by the door from like red to green, green to red, I don't remember, we know to be quiet and drop down and go low. And so I was like, okay, so they're training for active shooter. Mm-hmm. And of course, like I'm so sad that that's the world my kids live in, mm-hmm. right. but so thankful that the schools did it. That said, I was at Crime Stoppers. I've been here 17 years this month. And um, the parents started calling me and mm-hmm. they said, you need to call that and you our kids should not be receiving this type of training. It's precisely why we're in a private school. And you tell them they need to stop. This is damaging for the children. This is never going to happen here. And which, I, which training was this? The active shooter yeah. training oh, for, shoot. for little My kids. My goodness, yeah. They thought it was scary it and is. not necessary, but it's I thought scary, the complete, but necessary. it's You're the right. complete exactly. opposite. Yeah. Wow. You know, you have to do all types of, because unfortunately our kids are being raised in a completely different world. Right. You've been at the Y for how you said 30 37 years 37 years mm-hmm. the stuff you talked about 37 years ago mm-hmm. is nothing, nothing like what no. you're did you think you'd have like a refugee program mm-hmm. and mental health outreach no. in addition to swimming and karate and <laughs> everything else that you do i mean right. it's amazing how the world's changed where are we going though mm-hmm. what is the why going to be doing in five years well we're going to be actively involved in helping people break down those barriers, build bridges, and have a strong community. Because I think at the core of all this stuff, as I said earlier in the in the podcast, the core of all this is a stronger, more tightly knit community. Mm-hmm. That when we know our neighbors, we believe that we're neighbors and we're all in this together, we're less likely to do harm and more likely to step in and help. And uh, that's been, we've, we've really committed to that actually over the next 10 years to transform, to have a transformational impact on how people experience community here. And that's Houston. a big mission because the community is kind of broken down in that sense of like, you don't, you, I remember going home, you know, when we all played out on the streets, when the lights mm-hmm. went out, you had to be home before then, you knew your neighbors. Now you just kind of go yeah. in and then you come out and yeah. then your neighbors are here rather than yeah. next door. So how how do you, how are you, are you physically gonna make some, ch- I mean, are you gonna, tw- gonna try to get people together physically more yeah. often? Well, it's, it's about how we show up and how we deliver our programs and the intentionality around it. So mm. when I right now, our staff team is getting better and better at, at articulating. It starts by being able to speak into it. Oh, our the, the things we care most about is making sure people experience achievement, belonging and relationships mm. or connectedness. So what does that really mean is a, is a thing to continuously unpack in, a, in our day to day. But you're running a, a after school child care program. Did the kids are they learning? Are they experiencing setting goals and meeting them, having some mm-hmm. achievement? Uh, are they making new friends? We're beginning to to survey our members. One of the questions we ask is, have you made some new connections or some new relationships at the Y? And we'll find out what percentage report that that's their experience that's and continue it's to work on increasing that, yeah. right? And so yeah. it's, the, it's the little things, you know, when that it comes to coming in the difference. facility, but we also have transformed our membership now. You don't have to join it. You don't have to be part of a gym to be a member of the Y. And if you're part of another gym, you can still be a member of the Y through our impact membership, which is a lower price per month. And it also is really about being part of it, belonging and participating in the transformation of the community. Yeah. So I have to ask the question, are you guys funded primarily through the memberships? So we, if you look at our overall budget, it's, it's uh, about 30 to 35% membership revenue than this program revenue and then there's grants and government contracts and so people who are not members of the y but want to support what you do Mm. help how so they make financial contributions they volunteer Mm -hmm. and some become Mm -hmm. impact members which is a little more participatory it becomes a monthly subscription and they get regular communication they get to participate in some of the virtual and real uh, gatherings that we're curating for people to just get to know each other have conversation and Volunteer also. We have like youth leadership <clears throat> programs. I think my son was invited once to do a, a leadership program for mm-hmm. youth too. Yeah. And there, I think, and, and when you look at the <clears throat> club memberships that you have, I think um, there's such a. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what was that? What was that face? I'm not going to mention the name <laughs> of the why? clubs that were brought. Well, because I think there's so much value in what. It's not <laughs> extremely expensive to be oh, a part of the Y. Right. No. Young, no. young early yes. careers can be a part of the Y. Right. Oh, yeah. I think of the country club we're involved in. I mean, wow, for that amount of money, I, I don't get those kind of social programs for no, my child. It's a very, it's right? A, right? It's it's to go work out or to be, you know. Well, and that's what we've tried to be clear, too, is it, it, 
That's why we say not a not a gym, a community. Yeah. And there's lots of places you can go be part of a gym, but you can be part of this community whether you're using our gym or not. My and, son thinks it's because when you go play basketball at the Y on Bearing, mm -hmm. that all, all oh, the famous basketball players go there. I love that Y. Because I, I think some yeah. of those kids grew up, some of those adults that are playing professional it's ball home. started yeah. off in the YMCA. Yeah. So that's what my kids Will we ever, so, um, we, so people would see like Scott McClellan walking around HEB. Yeah. Or do we ever see Steve Ives at the oh, yeah. gym oh, yeah. at any of the Ys? You see me walking around, that's for sure. <laughs> Not at the gym. <laughs> well, I love that, you know, reading about you, um, it says you're a long distance runner. Mm. I'm curious, you do you run in Houston like you used to run in New England? No. Yeah. <laughs> I've gotten older and it's hot. But too damn yeah, hot. Yeah. It's too hot. Yeah. Yeah. But we walk, my wife and I, you know, we're going five, six mile hikes on the weekend. We love Memorial Park yeah, and the, bu the mm. Buffalo Bayou. We are so pleasantly surprised by how much great outdoor space there is. Yeah, there is. Great, yeah. I wouldn't have imagined that before coming here. I know. It's extraordinary. And with the new Land Bridge, I keep going there. I Isn't just am awesome? totally blown away by that. And I know you have two, is it two? Two daughters. Two daughters. I a 30-year-old living in L.A. and a 29-year-old living in Boston. Oh, and, wow. Mm -hmm. On either side. And we're in Houston. We have to curate cool it's destinations. It's three hours either way. Cool You're fine. Right. It's three hours either to way. That's right. I yeah. love it. Either of them in the like working, Actually, following Devin, your footsteps. our youngest is seven footsteps. years in or so of uh, oh, wow. working for the Y of Greater Boston. No yeah, way. She, she runs school age after school programs and summer camp. Mm -hmm. Okay. Isn't so that cool? That's like neat. the best compliment when your child goes into the same line of work. Mm -hmm. Amazing. You know. yes, yeah. I bet a lot of our friends go to the Y that she's at. Maybe. I mean, yeah. I don't like, know. I'll connect I know. <laughs> she's at the Oak Square Y. Okay. I'm yeah. right. that, 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 that's <laughs> you, um, you all are doing incredible things. You and, you know, we're so thankful for what you're doing. We're so thankful for what Goya is doing. And sort of the reason we've uh, kind of saw the partnership is it's just major brand with major community. Yeah icon sort of hero heroic organization coming together to to build this barrier around children we're so thankful to be a part of it mm -hmm. and we want to continue to do we whatever do. whatever we can to support to support you the the three thousand staff and thousands of members or volunteers um and hundreds of thousands of members and of course the work that goya is doing houston don't you feel like houston's so lucky mm -hmm. sort of as being to me a hub of major collaborations and well that's been another real pleasant surprise coming here i kind of sensed it before coming here so i'm starting year five of being here yeah. in houston and gosh it's been ex it's been a heck of a five well, years COVID with, with yeah. yes, massive totally. disruption and yep. adaptation that's been required as a result of that and the access connection to political leaders business leaders they want us to be at the table and it's extraordinary and you know i always i say in most cities not for profits, a business, et cetera, are good at playing in the sandbox, playing nice in the sandbox. But when you really organize around collective impact, that's when amazing things happen. So we're happy to be working with everybody in the space. And yeah. thank you for giving a microphone to this. That's a, it's an important piece of it. You guys are doing incredible work. We're so thankful for the YMCA to have you leading mm. it here in Houston. And how do people follow you and get engaged? Well, ymcahouston.org is our website. It's a great website. It's got all sorts of information there around uh, our work. Be on the lookout for five days of action coming oh, tell up. Us which, about that. So yes. this will be, it's just, we focus for five days. It's a national event. It's something the Ys have, uh, this group of CEOs, it's now grown to a larger group. Mm have done to just bring awareness. It's shining a light, bringing more awareness to the principles and practices required to protect children and our responsibilities as adults. Like many other things, it's easy to say, well, let's teach kids how to keep themselves safe. We think it's real important to teach parents and teach mm -hmm. adults how to create a safe environment because they're the ones more likely to be able to intervene if grooming-like behavior is happening. Right. And we give them the confidence to be able to say something to, to their coach or their close mm -hmm. friend or neighbor. No, it's, I'm not. I'm not okay with you driving alone. I know it's a great help. You're gonna take my child to soccer practice, but we no. don't. We don't follow that policy. And now we have. A, now they have a conversation which illuminates for that other person a little bit more about the why of it. You know. You know, I'm a great guy. I'm never gonna do anything wrong. Absolutely. I believe that to be so. And I'm not going to let you take my child alone in your car. It's and just, it's not awkward. Do you have well, any conversations always, around slumber parties or slumber or sleepovers? Are you also guiding parents? Like, Well, I think this be becomes a guide, right? I've yeah. talked to so many parents that 
they, they, they just ask. We always did. Who's going to be there? Who's the adults? Let us talk to the adults who are going to be there. Yeah. I want to want to know I'm who's going to be we're, there. See, we're two we're, moms that are like literally no sleepovers ever. Right. Period. End of discussion. I mean, Georgie, mm-hmm. my oldest like, is seventeen now, but can he have a sleepover? Oh, now? Yeah. He can have a sleepover yeah. now, and he yeah. can kick somebody's ass if something's going wrong. But but yeah, at a young age, I mean, my father was a no sleep. Your dad was a no, no sleepover. Way. No, no, no. You you know how much effort we took in teaching our children to stop at the intersection, look both ways. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's very much like that. I know. I keep telling parents, why, you it's wouldn't a slower let, conversation. You, t- you tell your kids to stop and look both ways. These are th- four or five key components. Yeah. Don't be alone with an adult. Stop, adult drop, and roll. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Don't be tell. alone with an adult yeah. who's not your parent. Right. Yeah. Period. Right. That's just not a, not a thing we do anymore. But you know, it's, it's usually not the child putting themselves in that situation. Right. I know that's what it's you usually the parent. Yeah. yeah. Right. And it's just so tragic that that's that's where it's and even and I think even though when you have a a, a parent that is like I'm going to go off on a tangent. I was in Hawaii this weekend and and was seeing my sister. She has two little ones, mm. and and you think that's a safe, it's an island, it's safe, but you're looking at we're, we're at a resort for a little while and we're looking around I'm like okay these people are from all over and even on this island we know there's oh, the, yeah. there are the, the, those things happening. Mm-hmm. So it's just like you're right. It's it's got to become like stop, drop, and roll. It's got to stop, be like stop at the stop sign and look both ways mm-hmm. without gotta, becoming paranoid. Without that's becoming the balance, paranoid. you know. Mm-hmm. That's the that's the tricky that's balance. Was telling you too, but that's hard. It when is you're very in, hard when you're in the line of work that we're in. I know with yeah. recovering yeah. You, children, you, you know a lot. Oh, you we see look a lot. too much, mm-hmm. and you're just it's over. It's overwhelming. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, I just did a case. This this the, I just I did an interview on a case. It was the case of a little girl that was in Dallas, oh. and you know Found she'd been groomed South online Carolina. in a video game yeah. called Identity Four Five, Identity Four, Identity Five, and literally one of the characters on the game was called Survivor. So, and it looked very Wednesday like, you know, that's mm-hmm. Joe Wednesday. Mm-hmm. And this person had been talking to her on through this game, acting like a, a, a teenager, and he literally came from North Carolina, yeah. came to her house in Dallas, and they parted. Literally picked him up, mm-hmm. picked her picked up, her and up. took her back to North Carolina. And and this these parents had all the accounts, yeah, all the that's passwords. The only, that's the only thing that saved that. That's the only life. thing that saved them. Yeah, they were the heroes of their own story. Yeah. Mm. So it's almost like we have to train and educate to the lowest. Uh, these were great parents, and it's still happening mm-hmm. to them. So uh, I, I'll just I, say that that is that is something, it. and I hope the why you know, in all the education you do. And as we are so thankful that you focus on parents. We started focusing on parents as well back in twenty. 13, I think mm-hmm. we started to say we need to be talking to parents as well, um, is technology and parents have to have access mm-hmm. to their children's accounts and w- know what they're on because this particular story, this girl was held in a shed mm-hmm. 10 days, 11 days, I don't right. remember, sexually assaulted and we don't know what else. But um, with you know, law enforcement sometimes says, well, that's a runaway. But with thanks, thanks to the parents having access to her technology, they were able to see that the groomer had been talking to her and yeah. was able to lure her out of the home. So um, we just have to keep remembering you know, what the consequences are on the other side of that. If you want proper motivation, just mm-hmm. I was at a when I was in Columbus, Ohio, we ran a shelter, a 600 bed shelter. Mm-hmm. And at one point I asked the staff there, I said, they do intake and they get the life stories of people. I said, what percentage of the women coming into the women's shelter have sexual trauma, mm. sexual assault, or, or child child sexual abuse in their record. Now, are you kidding me? 100%. Yeah, wow. So sad. 100%. Yeah. I, believe, uh, I really believe you. And that doesn't directly cor- correlate uh, causation, mm-hmm. but there's a correlation there in terms of, I guess, slowing down people's development, capacity to mm. handle stuff. Which leads to a whole bunch of other things, alcoholism and and homelessness in some instances, and I would say an inability to thrive, which is the biggest sadness I have. You know, a, fr- a friend of ours did. This is another interesting fact. A friend of ours did uh, wrote a book. It's called The Fifteen Percent. His name is Terry Giles. He was an attorney, and he prosecuted the cases, uh, the Catholic Church mm. um, in California. Yeah, and he did a study afterwards that literally said only fifteen percent were able to thrive with the adversity that they faced. Yeah. And so you think of all, how, this was hundreds, of, right. over a hundred children that he represented. Right. And so you're right, we have to build these tools inside of our kids to be able to not only prevent for themselves, but how do they move past 
uh, through that type of tra you know, that trauma, if in fact we can't. Well, if we want to get even right. more scared, what to hurt people do? To hurt others. Hurt, they hurt yeah. people. Well, that's what we think. Most of the people that are mm -hmm. traffickers mm -hmm. have been hurt before. Mm -hmm. So I commend you guys for taking this yes. stance, and oh. I hope you guys get very verbal. Thank well, publicly. we are. Thank you yeah. for giving us a platform for that, and for participating and partnering with us and others in telling this really important story for parents. It's awareness. You don't have to be paranoid. In fact, you yeah. should be less paranoid when you're aware. That's right. And because you're you're just using the same rules for everybody. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter how nice they are or how kind they look. We're using the same rules of engagement and everything for our kids and making it less likely that they'll fall prey. You know what I would say? What, what am I? I'm headed 50. I'm 50 or something years old. I would say back in the day, the YMCA uh -huh. probably trained me in my karate classes to right. kick somebody's ass that they were doing oh, this to me saying, now. She's still now using it. <laughs> it's going to be now you're you're going to do that more emotional, yeah. mental based education and training. Yeah. Plus the karate classes that you yeah. need to be able to. Plus that, too. Yeah. I love it. Well, so, so you talked earlier about a camp. Yeah. And I just have to say that, you know, there's historic cases. Yes. We know more today than we a lot more today than we did. 20, 30, 40, mm. 50 years ago about what was even possible. Yeah. And so the practices and protocols we have today are very different than mm -hmm. they were. But I've had conversations with people who have called to say, hey, 30 years ago, these things or this thing happened to me. Yes. And in every single one of those instances so far, I've been able to explain to them what I've been up to in this space and what our why is up to and how the whys know so much more. And here's, mm. and their answer has been consistent. I just glad to know. Yes. That you're, you're making, doing yes. you're doing something and yes. you're making sure that it's less likely that this would happen to yeah. someone else. That's what matters most to me. Even this, this mom whose who's son, I mean, if you hear his story, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. But she says, I want, I don't want it. I, I don't have anything against camp. I want every child to actually go to summer camp. I just want to make sure they're safe yeah. when they're there. And we're so thankful that leaders like you are making sure that that is the case, whether it's, you know, in a out day camp a sleepover camp, after school program, um, sort of check in class, check out, latchkey kids scenario. It's the most important work right now, mm -hmm. as far as I'm concerned, including um, in addition to all the work you're doing to build bridges and bring the community together. So mm -hmm. thank you. Thank you. Steve. We thank everybody for joining us on this episode of The Balanced Voice, and we look forward to seeing you next week. Take care, everybody. Thanks for tuning in to today's Balanced Conversation. You can find real solutions and tangible resources in our show notes at thebalancevoicepodcast.com. To join the conversation, follow us on Instagram at thebalancevoicepodcast and on Twitter at balancevoice underscore. Stay up to date on Renya's work by following her at the Renya Report. And we can't wait to see you next week for another Balanced Conversation.